make sure it's actually took. Okay. And this is good. I wanted this so I could show it. Okay. <laughs> That's why I was so out of the fact I really wanted the book. <laughs> Hello. I'm Diana Belchase, and I'm here with the incomparable Jane Porter. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me today. Jane has written 43 amazing, amazing books. The most recent one is The Good Daughter and the yeah. Brennan Sister Trilogy. And she is four-time Rita winner, Golden Heart winner. And, um, um, oh, I said winner, didn't I? Let me just start over again if you don't mind. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's great. If you need to start over at any point. Okay. This is okay. whatever you need, okay? okay? Hi, I'm Diana Belchase, and I'm here with the incomparable Jane Porter, who is the author of 43 absolutely amazing books, the latest of which is The Good Daughter in the Brennan Sisters Trilogy. And uh, she is the winner of four the finalist for four Rita nominations, a uh, Golden Heart winner, and uh, someone who I hold very dear to my heart because her books touch me so very much. Jane, you said to me that your books are about um, grace, redemption, and second, second chances. chances. Um, tell me a little bit about that. I, I think I write for what I call the real girl, the real woman out there, who hasn't had that perfect life, who we get a little beat up, we, who we've made mistakes, um, where everything isn't all, you know, roses and sunshine. Mm -hmm. And so I love that idea that no matter what we've been through, no matter what we've experienced, we always can have better, and we can always have a happy ending or a happy life. And so I really believe in second chances. I really believe that even hard things can be forgiven and overcome. And so I love that. I love, I love second chance stories, meaning not second chance always at love, but that maybe we're not that beautiful, perfect, innocent little girl anymore, but we're even better. We're mm -hmm. an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. I think that is so wonderful. I think that's why your books touch me so much. I wanted to say congratulations. I heard that the Brennan sisters might be a TV movie. Well, they're, they're developing it right now and pitching it around to some, uh, it's been optioned. And uh, the, uh, we've got some interest in maybe it being a TV show or a series. We've got someone else interested in maybe a mini-series. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't ever hold my breath. I was lucky that Flirting with 40 was, was um, green-lighted and became a movie. But I've had other projects that have been optioned. In fact, all my books have been optioned. Some of them make it into scripts. Some of them, uh, you know, even get characters attached. But then it's market. It's changed. It doesn't always work out. So I'm, I focus on the, writing the next book. But it is exciting that people right now are loving this Britain family. Well, everybody, remember, write in to your local TV station and say you want to see the Brennans as a TV show, because I do. <laughs> but you have a wonderful analogy for life, which I've heard about you comparing life to a surfer. Um, and I want to hear the points about, about surfing and life. Well, I, I'm, I came to surfing late. I mean, my husband now is a surfer. He has a surf school in Hawaii. And he was the one I interviewed for Flirting with 40. But Is that how you met? Yes. Oh, he was the that's guy a real romance. But one of the things that meeting Ty and learning about surfing has taught me that there's things that I do that make life harder. Surfers approach life a little bit differently, and I think it's it's really useful for being I think more flexible and not so rigid. And one of the first things is that you know waves come in sets, mm -hmm. so that there's going to be waves, and then there's going to be a calm or a flat period. Surfers don't agonize when it gets flat; they mm -hmm. know there will be waves again. Mm -hmm. And so you you know surf when there are waves, and then you you find something else to do when there's not, and you don't sit around and, and, and overthink it. You, so I love that. I love that you're not panicking and agonizing, where are the waves? You mm -hmm. just wait. Mm -hmm. And there's a calmness and a peacefulness about it. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing was when you have... And being able to enjoy that calmness. Well, that's it. You're not, mm -hmm. you're not living in this kind of tortured state of, I don't have this, I don't have this. It's accepting that waves always will come back. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one that... that I think it's that I love that that the idea that there's abundance in life. We're yes. not we're not like lacking. We're not going to shrivel up and die. I think the second thing was when you are out there surfing, you have to return up to the lineup to catch your next wave to where the waves mm -hmm. are, are. But people like me have spent a lot of life is you just then go back and you you just you return or you do something the hard way. 
Well, mm -hmm. for surfers, they return to line up through the channel. So the idea is to look for the channel, and that's where you head. So you look for the calm between, and channel means there's a calm place between waves where waves break, where you're not going to have the wave breaking on you and breaking on you. So you so get find the easier path the easier to path. shore. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, why take the hard way every time? Find something that might be a little bit easier, mm -hmm. um, which to me was very novel, because I've never tried to do the easy way. <laughs> I always do the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. But it's exhausting, and, and it makes you not want to do something after a while. I think the third thing was when you're surfing, you know, wherever you look is where you end up going. So know your direction and maybe stay focused on that direction. It doesn't mean not being aware of anything else around you, but if you're constantly looking off this way or this way, you're going to go that way. And you're going to, you'll probably get, break off the wave. You'll fall um, if you look down a lot. If you're, mm -hmm. you're going to fall. And so a lot of it was kind of being accepting, focused, and then calm as you head in that direction. So keeping your eye on the goal instead of looking left, right, right or down. Right. Mm -hmm. Because where you look is where you go. And I love mm -hmm. that. that. That made a lot of sense to me. Your focus ends up being your direction. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the other thing that I have loved too is it's being flexible. It's being relaxed. If you're rigid on your board, um, if you're going to hit you know, white wash or, or the wave changes, you're going to fall off. You've got to keep your knees thin and relaxed. You've got to keep your body relaxed. You can handle mm -hmm. life better when you're flexible. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was the other thing is I like to go, I'm a bit of a, a boxer, a little pugilist, and I like to go through boom, boom, boom. <laughs> but the truth is you, you can't accomplish as much as when you're relaxed and you're kind of clear mm -hmm. and you're willing and accepting that the wave is going to change and you need to, be, to do different things. Mm -hmm. And I'll, so I think that that's helped me be, try to be, um, you know, less resistant to, to, to life the way it is and mm -hmm. realizing things are going to change. Mm -hmm. And then my job is to kind of roll with that too. Well, when you said it to me, it was an aha moment. <laughs> so I think it's, it's a lot of great advice to know that there are times that you're going to be still and just to let it be. Well, that's it. When, if guys are already out there in the water and there's no waves for a while, they use that 15 minutes, the 10 minutes, the 30 minutes, and they talk. They relax, they lay back on their board, they enjoy the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then when they start seeing the waves starting to grow. And the other thing that I love with surfers is if you surf a lot, you don't just grab at any wave. You pick the wave. You wait for the one you want. Um, and then when you know which wave, and they can see them way far out before the, just as they're starting to form. You know, my husband will say, that's my wave out there. And I see nothing. He goes, that one. I'm like, he says, the third one back. And I, again, I, I don't see it, but he says, that's his. And then he's in position, he's mm -hmm. ready, and then when it comes, he paddles and he catches his wave. Mm -hmm. And I love that. You're not chasing just anything in life. You're chasing the right thing. The right thing. And when and you're, you're relaxed and, and rested so that when the right thing comes along, mm -hmm. you're ready to act. I, I'm going to adopt this. I'm going to go out and start surfing. <laughs> well, actually, I don't think you want to see me surfing. But. I'm the world's worst surfer. I'm such a nervous girl out there in the lineup. But I think trying new things, too, is mm -hmm. really important. So I think that that's what's shown me. Surfing has shown me that we can constantly learn new things. Old dogs mm -hmm. can learn new tricks. So, Well, tell me about the Brennan trilogy. There's the good... The good uh, woman, good woman, the good daughter, daughter, and then the third is the good wife, and it's about a big Irish American family in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I would call it working class. Somebody mm -hmm. yesterday said it was blue collar, and it, but it, there is that element of a very strong Irish Catholic family that's helped to build the city of San Francisco. The dad's a fourth generation San Francisco firefighter. Mm -hmm. He and. Uh, they love the city. They're part of the city, and she's a Catholic school teacher. You know, each of the each of the kids are part of San Francisco, mm -hmm. and I, I just love that kind of commitment that we all have often seen with so many of you know whether we see it with the Italians or the Irish Americans or the Polish community. You are committed to that city. And you said you're German Scotch, right? Yeah, I'm German. <laughs> but it's that thing that you know you aren't. I love that loyalty to to your family, to your faith, to your community. And it's about doing the right thing. It's not always about mm -hmm. making, you know, a fortune and waiting for your stock to, you know, stocks to like, you know, cash in. But you're showing mm -hmm. up. You're doing your job. Doing your job. And what's the book that's coming out in December? Oh, Away in Montana. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's I'm starting to write a Montana-based series of kind of lone wolves and rugged cowboys. But but this it's single-title romance with a lot of my women's fiction elements thrown into. 
but I'm excited. It's a kind of a Christmas holiday story. And what I call it's achy, breaky, sweet. It's Aww. what I love to write best. And the title's going to be? Away in Montana. Away in Montana. So I'm looking so forward to reading that. And thank you so much for being here thank with you, me. Thank you, Diana. I'm Diana Belchase here with the wonderful Jane Porter. And thank you. And keep reading. <laughs>